8 Sports is proud to bring you local high school football. Tonight, the Santa Barbara Dons take on the Dos Pueblos Chargers in the 42nd annual Crosstown Showdown here at Scott O'Leary Stadium on the campus of Dos Pueblos High School. Tonight's game is brought to you by Montecito Bank and Trust, Paths to Prosperity. Also brought to you by Milpas Rental, Keller Facial Plastic Surgery, Dan Ensel, Luxury Real Estate, and Presto Pasta. And hi again, everybody. John Martin with you from O'Leary Stadium. Glad you're with us for tonight's presentation of award-winning high school football on Cox 8. It's the game of the year in Santa Barbara County. The Channel League and City Championships are on the line tonight as 7-2 Dos Pueblos, 3-0 in the Channel League, host the Santa Barbara Dons, who are also 7-2 and 2-1 and in the Channel League. Both teams took care of business last week. We'll start with the Dons first and first-year head coach Doug Keynes. The Dons led Ventura 25-10 at Peabody Stadium after three quarters last week and ended up beating the Cougars 25-17 to keep their Channel League hopes alive. But the storyline this week is Sean Ramos, the gifted quarterback, was suspended this week for violation of school policy. He'll be out for six weeks. That includes not only school sessions, but football as well as basketball. Ramos is on the basketball team. He won't be able to do any school or school related activities for six weeks. That means junior James Hale will start tonight at quarterback for the Dons. But Coach Kane says they've got plenty of weapons and he is right. It's gonna be running by committee tonight. The Dons with three talented tailbacks. They go by the names of Jason Jimenez, Polo Torres, and Rudy Corrales. Jimenez, the leading rusher for the Dons with 334 yards, has a combined six touchdowns on the year. Polo Torres has rushed for just under 300 yards, and Corrales has 150 yards on the ground. He's also caught 11 passes for the Dons, and he has four combined touchdowns. So they're all skilled players. If this one comes down to a final possession tonight in the last minute, well, Santa Barbara feels confident. They've got Matthew Medina, the senior kicker. He's four of six this year and has nailed one from 50 yards, so he's got the leg to do it for the olive and gold. Dos Pueblos, they come in seven and two, and they are in first place. A win for first-year coach Nate Mendoza gives DP the Channel League Championship outright, the city title as well, and the number one seed in the playoffs, which will start a week from tonight. DP is loaded. They've got a lot of talent, and it starts at the top. Their quarterback, LaShawn Bell, a junior, has passed for almost 500 yards and rushed for almost 400. He's combined 12 touchdowns, four on the air and five on the ground. He's a multi-threat under center for DP. They've got power running and shifty running. The power guy is Anthony Spirito Santo. The senior leads the Channel League in rushing with 863 yards and nine scores, and he's been hot of late. Not only does he have three 100-yard games this year, but he has six touchdowns in his last three games, all of those Charger League wins. If they want to change it up, they'll go to Dylan Rohde. He's more of a shifty outside back. He also contributing mightily this year for the blue and gold. He's got 561 yards and five scores, and their do-it-all guy is Nico Bornan. Two years ago when the Chargers won the league title in Ventura, it was a 47-yard field goal by Bornan that gave him a three-point win. Against the Cougars this year, Bornan kicked two field goals, three extra points, he punted six times, had an interception on defense, and even had a catch on offense. He's a tight end, a punter, a middle linebacker, and you name it, Bornan can do it. So this DP team is loaded tonight. What's at stake? Well, the Channel League Championship, the Dons win, they're co-champs, and they would have the number one seed in the playoffs, as well as the city championship. And as I said, DP trying to win the league title outright and get the number one seed as well. The number one seed, of course, gets a home game in the CIF playoffs. Weather in Santa Barbara is picture perfect tonight. Temperatures today about 67 degrees. Game time, it'll be in the low 60s and will probably end up in the 50s before this one is over. We're so glad you're with us. It's the game of the year in Santa Barbara County. Santa Barbara coming across for the 42nd Crosstown Showdown. 
seven and two Santa Barbara against seven and two Dos Pueblos. Fasten your chin straps. This one's gonna be a classic and we've got it all coming up next right here on award-winning Cox 8. A show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. Forty-second Crosstown Showdown from O'Leary Stadium on the campus of Dos Pueblos. John Martiny with you as we bring in Jeff Zamora as well on the broadcast. And partner, what a game we have tonight. The Santa Barbara County Game of the Year, the Channel League title, the city championship, and the number one seed in the Channel League playoffs all at stake tonight. Yeah, huge game tonight, John. You know, both teams are fired up. Santa Barbara coming across town, huge game for them, must win. You know, if they lose, they're in a three-way tie for second place. You don't want to put that your playoff at stake. And DP wants the title outright, so we're in for a barn burner. The senior Matthew Medina puts his toe to the ball in the 42nd Crosstown Showdown for the Channel League title is underway as Dos Pueblos returns it out to the 30-yard line. That's where DP will start their first possession of the night. Malcolm Sellard Farrell takes it out just past the 30-yard line. The obvious question, Jeff, and we'll get to it when the Dons are on offense, how they will respond without Sean Ramos tonight. But we'll take a look at the Chargers first as they will have the ball. The Dons won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. A smart choice when you're the road team. So DP 7-2, alone in first place at 3-0. and We'll open the game on the ground, and that's not a bad idea. A Charger team that is averaging 222 yards per game on the ground. Tops in the Channel League, and they give it to Anthony Spirit Asanto, who pushes it out to the 37-yard line for a solid gain of six yards on first down. And Spirit Asanto, one of their stellar backs in the backfield, talked to Coach McGahee before the game. Very proud of his running backs this year, putting a, outstanding numbers up on the board. Spirit Asanto, 10 rushes for 79 yards in last year's Crosstown Showdown as the Santa Barbara fans cheer. Spirit Asanto is dropped for no gain. Coming in to make the hit for the Dons was Jordan Pena, who is fourth in the league in tackles with 65. That was double sixes on the year right there for Jordan Pena. Great time to pick up that number 66. Excellent job on the defensive end, right up the gap, stopped him right at the goal line or the, the line of scrimmage. Great job getting that penetration. It's hard to stop Spirit Asanto for no gain or a loss. He'll try to get positive yardage this time on third and about four. And Spirit Asanto will be very close to a first down, but I believe will be short, Jeff. They'll spot him at the 39 yard line. Gain of two, but that will leave Dos Pueblos after three Spirit Asanto runs, two yards shy of the first down. And a great job by Santa Barbara's D coming out and really establishing themselves. A three and out to hold DP2 on the first possession is outstanding for them. Really good momentum. The key play, obviously, that no gainer, Pena stuffing him on second down. So now Nico Bornan, who does just about everything for the Chargers, hits a nice punt that is fielded by Santa Barbara at the 25, and straight up the middle goes the Dons. That's Efren Sanchez at the 35, running in the beat at the 20, and he is tripped up at the 10-yard line. Sanchez exulting his fans on the near side as he clenches his fists and roars his delight. 65 yards on the punt return, and the Chargers get a jolt from the olive and gold. I think you have the Chargers a little shocked there. An excellent punt return by Sanchez. He started up the middle, broke it out to the left side, 
had nothing but grass ahead of him, but he got caught from behind by a defender. Great return. So Santa Barbara, a minute 45 into the game, gets an electric play from Efren Sanchez, the 5'7", 172-pound senior. And the Dons have it first and goal from the 10. James Hale, who is known to his buddies by the name Eli, off to Jimenez, I believe, and Jason was stuffed back to the 15-yard line. Spirit of Santo will turn about his fair play. He said, I got eight on three carries. I'm going to knock you back for a loss as Jimenez loses five on first down. And Spirit of Santo, a name you'll be hearing all night as he plays both sides of the ball. Outstanding athlete, running back, linebacker, etc. Hale throws to a wide open Jimenez, makes the catch at the five, and into the end zone for a touchdown, Santa Barbara High School. So the Dons come across town and strike quickly. 9.34 to play in the opening quarter, and the first salvo fired in this Channel League title showdown goes to the Olive and Goal. Matthew Medina, who has missed only one extra point all year, knocks it through. He is now 30 of 31 in extra points. And the Dons, who have lost seven of the last eight meetings against Dos Pueblos on the road, their only win in that span in 2008, but they jump out on top first here tonight, courtesy of Efren Sanchez and a 15-yard touchdown pass from James Eli Hale. Nice looking pass by James there. You know, we talked about it earlier, wondering how Santa Barbara is going to respond with their star quarterback being out, and it looks like they answered that question right off the bat. Excellent play on special teams, and then their quarterback came down and did what they needed to do. A Eli run. says, Hale, yes. <laughs> Santa Barbara leads 7 0. Boy, what a momentum change early. Santa Barbara just taking the home crowd out of it for the moment. Student section is still cheering on the far side, but the other half is a little bit stunned as Medina once again will kick off. Chargers will go straight up the middle and a nice run for DP's Kane Edwards as he gives Dos Pueblos great field position. Should be at the 41 yard line. So DP will have it for the second time in this opening quarter. Eli Hale, we had talked about it, Jeff. He's thrown only two passes prior to that, was one of two for 40 yards. It was a long pass. This one, a 15-yarder to Jason Jimenez. So Santa Barbara leads 7-0. The Chargers will give it to Dylan Rohde, and Rohde quickly into the secondary down the far sideline gets a block and he is going to take it to the house touchdown dos pueblos what a start to this one as we said earlier it's going to be a barn burner knock them down game and if so far it's held up dp right back first play from scrimmage they go all the way for pay dirt amazing a 59 yard scamper by dylan Rody. And the Chargers take a grand total of 20 seconds to tie this one up. Should Bornan knock the extra point through? He has missed only two extra points this year, and he knocks it through. Nico now 29 of 31 in extra points. Hold on to your hats and fasten your seatbelts, folks. 7-7 from O'Leary Stadium. Yeah, Fast-paced game tonight. I hope they brought some oxygen tanks at the rate they're going. They're going to need lots of air in between. You envision hot starts, but you can't envision a start like that. Tonight's Crosstown Showdown for the Channel League title is brought to you by our title sponsor, Montecito Bank & Trust, providing safe and sound financial solutions. Also brought to you in part by Milpas Rental, equipment rental and sales, serving our community for 60 years. Hello to Frank at Milpas Equipment Rental and Sales. 
John Martini, Jeff Zamora. You can't think of a start like this. 65 yard punt return by Sanchez setting up the touchdown. And look at Bornin's leg, Jeff, as he drills one completely out of the end zone. Yeah, that's no surprise. I don't know if you noticed the PAT, but he kicked that thing so far out. I think they caught it at Costco. <laughs> Good luck returning that one, yeah. huh? He returned it to the checkout line at Costco, that's for sure. Yeah. Wow, heck of a leg on him. Yeah, Costco takes returns, Bornin does not. <laughs> as you look at the Charger helmet, it's been around for, well, forever, I think. This rivalry starting back in the late 60s, 1968. And it would be hard pressed to find a better start in the 42 years of this rivalry than this one tonight. Dons will start from the 20 following the touchback. And Jason Jimenez, who already has one touchdown, runs right up the middle. Runs into Starr, who makes the hit after a pickup of four yards. Eli Hale had only 20 touches at the offensive position coming into play tonight. He throws a flat pass near side to James Stevens, who is still on his feet. Both teams having trouble tackling in the early going, and Stevens takes advantage. He crosses midfield and is out of bounds right at midfield. They say he stepped out there, but it's still a 26-yard gain and a Santa Barbara first down. And a nice catch and run by Jamers there. Nice job of catching it in the flat, cut it inside, and then came back along the sideline and tiptoed for a nice game. Great move out there. Hale had passed twice, Jeff, rushed 11 times and caught seven passes. So he had only 20 touches throughout the first nine weeks on offense, and he's under center and doing a great job so far. Tried to scramble back to the line of scrimmage and loses a yard. There is a flag in the Don's backfield, which usually signifies holding, and you saw it there. Referee signaling holding against Santa Barbara. So it will be a spot foul. The play will count. Hale loses a yard, and then the Dons lose 10 more back to the 39-yard line. So total loss of 11, Jeff, on that one. We'll bring up first and 21 for the Dons. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. If you're just tuning in, shame on you. You've already missed two scores. Another pass to the leading receiver in the Channel League, James Stevens. Entered play with 33 catches, has two early grabs in this opening quarter. Tackled by Nico Borland at the 44-yard line after a pickup of five yards. And Hale doing a great job back there. Quarterback, nice poise, some good passes right on target. You know, Santa Barbara couldn't ask for a better start for their quarterback. I was just going to say, Jeff, so much for jitters, huh? Yeah. Three of three, 46 yards for Hale out of the gate. Doug Keynes cannot ask for a better start from his replacement quarterback. Polo Torres gets his first carry of the Crosstown Showdown and bumps it out to the 47-yard line. We're going to see a lot of Jimenez, a lot of Polo Torres, and a lot of Rudy Corrales tonight that running by committee, the three-pronged attack for the Dons. Very effective. We saw them a couple weeks ago against San Marcos with a tremendous three-run attack. Now the first key play of the night, third and 14, and Hale's going to air it out deep. Fires, and the pass is intercepted at the 19-yard line. Picked off by Jordan de Graffenried for Dos Pueblos. Hale with a nice pass. He had plenty of air under it. Just threw it too far into Graffenried. You see him there going to the sidelines, made a fantastic play. DeGraff and Reed, the free safety, just sat back there and just waited for it. Ball came right to him, excellent interception. Hale, I don't know if he saw him. I think he might have snuck on him back there. It's the third interception of the season for Jordan DeGraff and Reed. And that now leads the team in picks. 
Chargers will have it at their 20-yard line. So the Charger defense, after giving up a touchdown early, gets a defensive stop on the turnover. And Bell's pass on first down, intended for Malcolm Sillard Farrell, is incomplete. First pass of the night for LaShawn Bell. He might give Santa Barbara fits tonight, too. He's a dual threat, isn't he? Yes, he is. He can throw, and he's really good on his feet. The Graffin Reed to this point with two outstanding defensive plays. Earlier in the game, he's the one that saved the touchdown. And then now the, the interception, two excellent plays by DeGraff and Reed. Dylan Rohde, the Chargers score, was his sixth rushing touchdown of the year to tie the game up. Second and ten. And Bell will hand off, but not much there. Spirit of Santo. Looks like the Dons are putting hit me stickers on his uniform. They're all over Anthony. and. No question he's going to be keyed on tonight. Jeff, the leading rusher in the Channel League, coming in with 863 yards and nine touchdowns. Looks like we have a timeout out there. The referee took a hit by the, one of the players. Just a reminder, tonight's Crosstown Showdown from Dos Pueblos brought to you by Presto Pasta, real Italian presto. Also brought to you in part by Keller Facial Plastic Surgery, facial plastic surgery and advanced hair restoration specialists. Some of the spirit on this Friday night, final week of the regular season. Dos Pueblos will be in the playoffs either way. Let's take a quick timeout while we have an officials timeout. 6.37 to go, first quarter, 7-7 is our score. This is award-winning Cox 8. I'm Sarah Clark with Cox Communications. Welcome to Community Connections. This show highlights local organizations and leaders that contribute to our healthy, vibrant community. on the play, the reason for the timeout. Injured referee on the field, but he appears to be okay. No gain on the carry by Spirit Asanto. So it brings up third and 10 for the Chargers. 6.29 to go, opening quarter. Both teams seven and two overall. Those Pueblos a game ahead of the Dons in the league standings. Bell takes it himself and then slips. One of the Dons, Josh Cass, was coming up to greet him along with Salvador Arango, the senior defensive lineman, and Bell dove for a gain of a yard, but that's it. Bell looking like he was looking to throw downfield and then possibly just tuck it and run. Unfortunately for him, his feet came out from under him and he slipped. Fourth down, Dos Pueblos, and here we see big Nico Borland out for another punt. Get a big, quick pump fake. Bell, but no receivers available. So Bornan, a big kid, rips one to Sanchez. It takes Efren back to the 25, and now the ball is going to continue to roll inside the 20, and will be down by Dos Pueblos at the 18-yard line. That was touched by Tyler Welch. Bornan rips one there. It'll land at the 18-yard line. That's a 61-yard punt by Bornan with the roll. He'll take that a lot better than a 65-yard wow. run back following his first kick, which was nice as well. He hit about a 45-yarder, but Sanchez took it back 65 yards. So the Dons on offense again. This is Jimenez with a seam again. Ball comes out, bobbled. Players piling up, and Dos Pueblos, I believe, has it. Yes, they do. Second Santa Barbara turnover in the first seven minutes. Ryan Nuno recovers it for Dos Pueblos. 
And they had about four blue shirts diving for that one. Nuno comes out with it. But Jimenez with the fumble. The second Don's turnover and Dos Pueblos in a tie game has it at the Santa Barbara 35. Six man front for the Don's. They are certainly keying on the run. And that may make Spirito Santo's job a little tougher tonight as he plows forward to about the 31. Call it a gain of four and bring up second and six. I think Santa Barbara's coming out with a good defensive scheme. You know, put them all in the box, block, stop the run, and force Bell to pass the ball. Then once he starts beating you on the pass, then you spread it out. Good plan so far for Santa Barbara. And I love the intensity. Both teams, you can tell, have come to play. They are both on their best behavior tonight. Second and six. This time, it's Rody outside. Marker flies by his face mask, and then a second marker as Rody cut it to the 25, but will it stick? That might be a hold on the Chargers. So we'll see the officials talking it over at the 30-yard line. A holding penalty against Dos Pueblos. We're gonna give Jimenez about 10 yards on the carry before the fumble. Lost it at about the 34 yard line and it was recovered at the 35. This one will be a spot foul. Rody will gain only a yard before the holding penalty knocks it back to the 40 yard line. Second and 15, Bell out of the shotgun. Flips to Rody. Don's giving chase. Dillon runs into a Don at the 35-yard line. I think that was Jimenez, Jeff, that threw him down. Yep, Jason on the tackle after a pickup of five yards. First completed pass on the night for LaShawn Bell, who comes in completing just over 57% of his passes. Chargers now looking at a third and 10 from the Santa Barbara 35. Two receivers to the near side. Bell again, shotgun. A miss exchange perhaps. I think Rody was too close to Bell there and unable to hand off. Bell has to eat it for a loss of two. Looked like a little confusion in the backfield for DP and Carlos Orozco got right back there and able to bring down Bell quickly. Great play. Santa Barbara defense with a great scheme so far. His, his dad's right in front of us making sure we know who he is. Great job. Nice play. Well, the Santa Barbara Dons playing well defensively to this point as Bornan will hit a high punt on fourth and 12, angling it for the sideline and does an excellent job. That's going to go out of bounds at the six yard line. Only a 31 yard punt, but that's exactly what he wanted as the Dons will start deep in their territory. Montecito Bank and Trust, proud sponsor of award winning high school football, a trusted financial partner to businesses of all sizes. Montecito Bank and Trust. Also brought to you by Dan Ensel, Luxury Real Estate, full-time agent selling homes locally for over 23 years. He's closed over a billion dollars in sales. Call today. All calls are confidential. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. John Martini with Jeff Zamora after an explosive first three minutes in which each team electrified their side of the stadium with a touchdown. Things settling in just a bit here in the final three minutes of this opening quarter. Solid gain on first down there, Jeff. Polo Torres in the Don's backfield with a nice gain on first down. Now motion for the Don's. This will be the up back on second down and one. Rudy Corrales is 
gets the call and has the first down. Corrales doing a nice job of getting the ball right up the middle and able to get, gain enough yards for the first down and move the chains. Big first down for Santa Barbara with their backs to their own goal line. So Torres picks up eight and then Corrales the first down with a five yard pick up to the 19. And on first down. Parker stops play as you look at some of the Charger fans on this gorgeous Friday night. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s at game time. Don's on their side of the field. A few of them bundled up a little bit, but it's actually pretty pleasant weather for uh, the first Friday of November. It's great to have you with us. John Martiny, Jeff Samora, award-winning Cox 8. What a way to wrap up the regular season. Channel League Championship, the number one seed in the playoffs and the city championship all on the line. And it's a packed house tonight, as you can tell by the shots from our camera crew. This one, the game of the year for Santa Barbara County, no question about it. Hale following a holding play, has Sanchez wide open at the 40, and Efren is dropped right near midfield. Well, the Dons go bombs away after the penalty and come up smelling like roses. 38 yards on the play and a first down for Santa Barbara. Hale doing a tremendous job rolling out to his right, finding Sanchez back behind the free safety, able to get him the ball. Nice game by Santa Barbara. Excellent pass. We said it earlier, we didn't know what you're going to get with Hale, and he's so far doing a tremendous job out there. BP and Santa Barbara both said they were going to do what they do best. But sometimes we're planning for a seasoned senior and Ramos, and suddenly he's not there. And you were saying it before the game, Hale brings a completely different dimension to that Don's quarterback spot. Well, before this game, we didn't know much about his arm, and he's showing his arm strength, but we're more concerned for his, his running ability. You know, he's a point guard in basketball. We saw him at the end of the Santa Barbara San Marcos game with some nice moves, a great catch. Uh, you know, so he brings that athletic side of it. So really difficult to, to play defense against because you don't know what you're getting. We did. We marveled at his athletic ability, didn't we, in the second half of that big game victory over San Marcos. Polo Torres with a three-yard pickup. And the Dons will use their first timeout. We'll take one with head coach Doug Keynes. 52 seconds to play, opening quarter, 7-7. Seven to seven. This is award-winning Cox 8. show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. How about the start for Efren Sanchez, 103 all-purpose yards in this opening quarter. Second and seven following the three-yard run by Torres. Hale scrambling, trying to get away from two chargers, does, but airmails the pass as the Dons fans groan. Jordan Guzman was the intended target for Santa Barbara. And the ball just over his outstretched fingertips. It will bring up third and seven. As we just talked about, Hale and his athletic ability being very elusive in that backfield. It looked at one point, he had three chargers surrounding him, and he found a way to get out of there. And not just get out of there, but throw the ball downfield. Unfortunately, it's a little, little high, but a great job by Hale to avoid the tackle in the backfield. Yeah, he's playing outstanding. No jitters for him at all. Four of six, 84 yards, one interception, and one touchdown. Third and seven now, good pressure applied by the Chargers there. Ryan Nuno and Tyler Harris coming in on Hale and he fires his second incomplete pass. I'll take a look at it. So 
the Dons will have to kick it away with 39 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Getting a little rowdy over here. The fans are cheering, stomping around. We lost the monitor for a second, but we got it. We're good. Alberto Hernandez, the southpaw punter, rips one from the 49, and he angles it out of bounds on the far side of the field. Inside the 30-yard line, those Pueblos will have it in a 7-7 tie with 29 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Well, Jeff, we're seeing the two highest scoring teams in the Channel League tonight. We're also seeing two of the top three offensive teams in terms of yards. Santa Barbara is one, Dos Pueblos is three in yards, and they're one, two in points. But both teams have great defenses too. Both are averaging just about 17 points per game allowed. The spread between the two teams is less than a point. From the 28, Bell on the handoff. And a short gain, in fact a loss it looks like. Rody will be drilled back to the 26. So Dillon with three carries on what might be the final play of the opening quarter is stuffed for a loss of two. And the Chargers will have to contemplate a second and 12 as they switch ends of the field and get ready for the second quarter of play. Great start. Crowd on their feet after one quarter here at O'Leary Stadium. Let's take a timeout. 7-7 is our score as we head to the second quarter. You're enjoying the 42nd Crosstown Showdown for the Channel League title right here on award-winning Cox 8. Hi, I'm Sarah Clark with Cox Communications. Welcome to Community Connections. This show highlights local organizations and leaders that contribute to our healthy, vibrant community. second quarter from Scott O'Leary Stadium on the campus of Dos Pueblos. Second and 12 for the Chargers at their 26. And Bell with the hand to Spirit Asanto and Anthony who has three 100 yard games this year, Jeff, and has rushed for six touchdowns in his last three games, all of them league games, of course. Anthony heating up at the right time, runs into Rudy Corrales on that one. And both defenses really toughening up now. We started off the game in the first three minutes with two quick scores and not much since then. Santa Barbara's D has really toughed up the front line, stopping that run, and Dos Pueblos on the other side as well. So it'll be interesting to see how this rest of this half plays out. Spirit Asanto picks up five, so it's third and seven. As Bell goes to the line of scrimmage, high set formation, split receivers. He'll hand off and a marker out at the inception of the play. So we'll have to see if this one is coming back. Spirit Asanto close to the first down. But again, Marker came out at the start of the play. Two, two young coaches in their first chance at a league title in football. Nate Mendoza, of course, four years the baseball coach at Dos Pueblos. And Led the Chargers to two Channel League titles, so he has tasted victory. But uh, what an opportunity for the 30-year-old Canes and the 20-something Mendoza to have a shot at the league title here tonight. Just the start of what we hope is great careers for both excellent coaches. Very good coaches. Mendoza was a longtime defensive coordinator for Dos Pueblos. Took a couple years off, focused on baseball. Now he's back as a head coach. Very excited to be back. Coach Keynes, a Santa Barbara alumni. I believe he went to high school with my wife, my wife was telling me. Uh, very excited to be back at his alma mater coaching. Five yard mark off will make it third and 12 and Bell is gonna fight for the first down and get it. 
as he runs shoulder pad to shoulder pad into a Don, knocks him off the ball, and gets close to the 40-yard line. That's a tremendous run on third and 12. That's going to be a gain of 16 yards and a first down. 17, in fact, they'll mark him at the 41. I think the most impressive thing on that run was the way he ended it. Most quarterbacks would go down, not Bell. He threw his shoulder and popped the defensive guy right back. Tough kid. Shades of Steve Young on that one. Remember, Young used to go head up with the defenders. And now some motion. Left guard for DP, jumping offside. Dons were showing blitz. And a flinch will cost the Chargers five yards. Third penalty against DP for 20 yards. Dons have been docked twice, also for 20 yards. Where well, these teams come in so even statistically, even record, seven and two. Numbers are almost identical. It's all about executing on this given night. Executing and lack of penalties, I think, is going to be the what's going to determine this game. Huge for both teams. Crowd fired up. Early second quarter, ten and a half minutes to go. Seven to seven is our score. Bell on first and fifteen now, following the procedure call. Hands again to Spirit Asanto. Anthony on his seventh carry of the night. Takes it up to the 40 yard line. Pick up a four and we have an injured charger laying on his back at the 42 yard line. There's a good look at Nate Mendoza coming out with the cap and the headset. Mendoza, four years as I said, the Dos Pueblos baseball coach led them to two channel league titles. He was the MVP linebacker and fullback for Lompoc's 2002 CIF championship team. Attended Upper Iowa University. He's a great guy. And uh, we'll take a break, see about the injured charger. We'll tell you about his well-being when we return. This is award-winning Cox 8. show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. The injured charger, the lineman Jonathan Arias, 5'8", 210, a senior, and that hurts DP. They've already lost Jonathan Delacruz, who broke his ankle in practice this Wednesday. So that's two linemen down right now for DP. Bell on second and 11, scrambling. Reverses field, fires complete. I believe the Graffin Reed on the catch. And it is Jordan de Graffin Reed who makes the play and takes it down to the 41 yard line. That's a pickup of 19 yards and a charger first down. And Bell out there showing us his athletic ability. We saw Hales earlier and Bell comes out and says, oh yeah, you can do that. I can do that too. Watch me scramble. Watch me throw. Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> 19 yards and a first down. Now both these guys are only juniors too. We, we were talking about that. Most of the skill players in this game tonight are seniors, but both guys under the center tonight are just juniors. Right. So, so both of the young coaches have to be excited for next year and the future. Absolutely. Santa Barbara bringing up freshman Brent Hayes, who will be the uh, backup for Hale should they need him. And he's just a freshman. So Santa Barbara does have some great talent coming up through the grapevine here in the next couple of years. One yard pickup 
will make it second down and nine. Bell trying to again change direction and slips for the second time in the half. Carlos Orozco, one of the Don's captains, gets his 40th tackle on the year. That one was easy. Just touch him on the back and you get credit for a tackle. Yeah, that's twice tonight Bell's had a problem keeping his feet. Unfortunately for him, he had nothing but green on the left side. He had plenty of room for a run, but he slipped and fell for a loss. Loss of five will make it third and 14. Just over eight minutes to play before the half. Seven to seven is our score. Bell operating out of the shotgun. At midfield, now fires near side. And what's the call? They are gonna say a catch, I believe. Rafford Reed makes the catch, but it will be short of the first down. They needed 14, they got half of it there, Jeff. Pickup of seven, but it will bring up fourth and seven for Dos Pueblos. Interesting to see, it looks like Dos Pueblos might go for it. I don't see Borland coming out to punt. I see Bell still out there. Chargers indeed from the Dons 37 in a tie game are going to go for it. Pooch punt really only gives you 17 yards if it goes in the end zone. So Bell scrambles now, looks for a wide open Borman who makes the catch at the five and drags a Don into the end zone. Touchdown, Dos Pueblos. And the Charger fans, you see them there roaring their delight as DP, for the first time tonight, has the lead. Bell doing a nice job of rolling out to his right, getting the defenders to commit to the run, able to find Borland behind the free safety deep for the touchdown. 37 yards, Borland was all alone at the five, made the catch. Jonah Iwanaga tried to tackle Borland, but Nico too big and strong at that point. Born in 6'3", 230, and Iwanaga, no match for him. Jonah, six feet, 172. You can't fault Iwanaga. Born and already had a full head of steam. Right. So a 37-yard pass from LaShawn Bell to Nico Bornan. And now a Penalty on the conversion will move it back five yards. So it will be a 25 yard extra point for Bornan. Has plenty of height on the kick. It is up and it is good. Dos Pueblos, after falling behind in the first two and a half minutes of the game, have responded with two consecutive touchdowns and the seven and two Chargers who are ranked eighth in the latest poll, leading ninth-ranked Santa Barbara from the Western Division of the CIF by a score of 14 to seven. Beautiful pass to a wide open Bornan. Presto Pasta, one of our great sponsors this season. Presto Pasta is real Italian, Presto. Also brought to you in part by Keller Facial Plastic Surgery, Facial Plastic Surgery and Advanced Hair Restoration Specialists. 14 to seven. LaShawn Bell now has contributed 13 touchdowns this year. That was his fifth pass for a TD. And Nico Bornan, who leads the Chargers in receptions, just picked up his third receiving touchdown of the 2012 season. And Bornan once again showing his tremendous leg power, kicked it out of the back of the end zone. So it'll be Don's ball, first and 10 on their 20. Bornan is just unbelievably athletic. Ventura has nightmares about him. I think their coach is gonna be handing Bornan the diploma when he graduates in June just to wish him good riddance. Exactly. Nico kicked the winning field goal two years ago against Ventura, which gave DP the Channel League title, their first since 79, as Jimenez on first and 10 from the 20, 
goes around the far side. Think about that, Jeff. You know, two years ago, Bornin kicks the winning field goal. This year, down at Ventura, he kicked two field goals, three extra points. He punted six times, had an interception in the game, and caught a pass from his tight end spot. I'd say Ventura wants to say bye-bye yeah. to Nico Bornin. Yeah. They'll probably be the first to retire his jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that touchdown incidentally puts Bell over 100 passing yards. Jimenez with a pick up the five on the run. And what a catch by Emilio Gonzalez. Goes up for the jump ball one-handed and brings it down. Oh, my. There you see a nice Emilio. shot of Gonzalez. Outstanding catch by Emilio. He had a tremendous game last year against those Pueblos. We were talking about it pregame. Over 130 yards receiving, and that's the first time we've called him tonight. Looked like a Venus fly trap. Just stuck his arm up, and the ball right on his hand for a 10-yard play. That was gorgeous. First catch of the night for Gonzalez. Hale on first and 10, scrambling for his life. Now takes it up the middle and will turn a certain loss into a nice game. And a late flag comes out as well. Beautiful run by Hale to get out of jail. <laughs> Looks like we have holding against Santa Barbara. Looks like the initial ruling down there. It's a nine yard pickup, should it count. The marker came out at the end of the run. So I think the Dons fans were looking for maybe a face mask or a late hit, but instead, it's a penalty against Santa Barbara. So illegal use of hands will be a 10-yard mark off. That's Santa Barbara's third penalty of this Crosstown showdown. Exciting high school football from O'Leary Stadium. Ball moved back to the 32-yard line. So it will be a gain of seven on the scramble for Hale. And then another 10-yard mark off. And a short run there for the Dons. Yard line. Five minutes to play, first half. Seven for the Dons. Chargers with two consecutive touchdowns. Grab the lead at 14 7 as Hale trying to run up the middle one more time, and another marker, Jeff, comes soaring out during the middle of the run. Hale dropped back in the pocket, the pocket quickly collapsed as DP got a great push up the middle. And we see some more yellow laundry on the field, another flag, we'll see what happened on this play. Well, Santa Barbara, as you look at Hale, said they may have to run the ball more with the absence of Ramos. So far, Santa Barbara has rushed for just 36 yards. And Dos Pueblos, we've got with 92. So the Chargers are winning the ground battle. And that usually is an indication of how the game is going. Can you run the ball in a big game is always critical. Oh, this one's going to help the Dons mightily as Hale, who was talking to the official for an explanation of why he got drilled late. And now we know why. A 15-yard personal foul against the Chargers. That really helped Santa Barbara. Gives them breathing room and takes it out near midfield at the Don's 47. That's definitely a huge play. A, definitely a big momentum shifter right there because it looked like possibly a holding where the flag was thrown, but unfortunately for Dos Pueblos, personal foul, first down, moved the chains. Great field position for Santa Barbara. Would have been third and 15, and Santa Barbara one play away from punting. Now they have it up near midfield as Jimenez fights forward for an additional yard as he works his way close to midfield. We'll call it a gain of three, Jeff, but yeah, that's a huge play. Chargers already up a touchdown. One stop for DP on third and 15. The Dons have to punt. 
Instead, now they've got a fresh set of downs and the ball right near midfield. That is a huge change. Santa Barbara trailing by seven at the four minute mark, second down and seven. Hale has time. Now he's gonna tuck it under and gingerly gets out of bounds at the Dos Pueblos 44 yard line. We'll see where they mark it officially. Side judge was standing at the 44. They're gonna move it back to the 45. They'll say Hale stepped out of bounds there on the far side. Five yard pickup will bring up a critical third and two here for Santa Barbara. Don still with two timeouts. Dos Pueblos has all three. Quick snap, but the officials didn't like it. As they throw a marker, we'll have to see if this was offside or a false start. Another critical call right here. This is, this is a big call. Motion, Legal motion. Santa Barbara. So that will turn third and two into third and seven. 347 to go in a 14-7 ball game. Carl Givens, our floor director up here with us tonight on our beautiful set. Always a treat to come to Dos Pueblos and O'Leary Stadium. Dan Feldhaus, the athletic director, very hospitable. Rhonda McGahee is here. We'll tell you about what she's doing tonight for the uh, Red Cross and the victims of Hurricane Sandy. Third and seven. Pass over the middle is caught. A rolling dive by Iwanaga. And he snares it in for a Santa Barbara first down. What a catch by Jonah. Gain of 12. Dons move the chains. They move the chains and they move the crowd and getting fired up over here on the other side of the field, getting ready to see if they can get it into the end zone. On first and 10 from the Dos Pueblos 40. And Santa Barbara will move it to the 35. Jimenez with a power run. Knocks down Nuno at the 35. Wouldn't you know it, Jeff? You know DP loves to run, 222 a game. Ramos is out, so you figure the Dons are gonna run more. And we have both quarterbacks over 100 yards passing. That's why we play the game. That's exactly why. All Hale with 106 yards and Bell with 105. Through all the air. All of our pregame preparation goes right out the window when you're <laughs> anticipating a run game and they start passing. That's why I never predict anything. I just call the game. Five yards picked up by Jimenez on the previous play, and Sanchez on an end around adds to his gaudy first half numbers. Boy, Efren really lit up this stadium with that 65 yard punt return. Took it from his 25 to the DP 10 and set up the first score. A hail pass to Jimenez of 15 yards. You have to start wondering if Santa Barbara needs to pick up the pace here as you see the clock ticking down to a minute 50 seconds in the half. They still have two timeouts, third and one following the four yard pickup by Sanchez. They give to Nick Demarest, who's listed as an outside linebacker but comes in for the power jumbo package and appears to have the first down. Demarest comes in for one play. Should be a Don's first down. They had to get to the 34 and they get to the 32. Pick up a four yards. Clock, as you said, a little bit of a factor, 130 to play. Don's have it at the DP. 28-yard line, and Hale going for it all. Fires for Gonzalez. Does he come down with it? Yes! Touchdown, Santa Barbara High School. Emilio Gonzalez.
Gonzalez reaches for the sky again and comes down with the stars. What an athletic talent he is. Gonzalez had 10 catches in last year's Crosstown showdown for 143 yards, and he lights up the Don sideline tonight with a tremendous catch going high in the air to haul it in. And Hale doing a nice job of being patient there, letting Gonzalez run his route. Gonzalez at 6'3", and a basketball player used his height and his jumping ability to outleap the defender and haul it in for a touchdown. Another athletic play by De Santa Barbara. That's a great point. The Dons are using their athletic ability tonight to exploit matchups. And Hale not shy about throwing the ball deep, using Gonzalez's height and leaping ability to perfection. Five yards marked off, so it will be another 25-yard extra point, this time for Medina. But just like Borland, or Borland, I should say, he's unfazed as he knocks it through the uprights to tie the game for the second time tonight at 14 apiece. 28 yard pass from Hale to Emilio Gonzalez. And you could hear the cheerleaders and the fans really getting into it now. Tie game, minute 20 left in the first half. Tremendous play and everybody's fired up for this rivalry. Boy, every scoring play tonight has just been a thing of beauty. Hale, a great pass to Jimenez, who made a nice cut at the five for his touchdown. Rody exploding up the middle and then cutting for 59 yards and a touchdown to tie it. LaShawn Bell with a great pass to Bornand, and now Hale to Gonzalez to tie the game up. The Crosstown Showdown, a beauty tonight. Brought to you by our title sponsor, Montecito Bank and Trust, helping individuals and families along their paths to prosperity. And by Presto Pasta, real Italian, Presto. 14-14 is our score. Fans getting their money's worth, and we haven't reached halftime. Channel League Championship on the line. Both teams putting their heart and soul into this one tonight. And you see the Charger receiver, Malcolm Szilard Farrell, with a muff in the end zone, so it's an automatic touchback. Chargers will have it at their 20. They still have all three timeouts, Jeff, and a minute 18 in which to traverse this 80 yards. So we'll see if the Don's defense and leave it tied and or force a turnover. Chargers don't make a lot of mistakes. The only turnovers tonight have been two by Santa Barbara, but yet we're tied at 14 apiece. Cheetah pattern, two receivers on each side, but Bell is going to take it himself. Should be a gain of about four yards. Boy, what a grab by Gonzalez. That was just beautiful. A jump ball. He just went up and used his height and athletic ability to snare that. He really extended his arms and brought that thing in. Excellent play. That was more than just catching it. That was wanting it. You yes. could tell he wanted that ball and he owned it. He wanted it in perfect timing. You know, he saw the defender flat on his feet and he went up and grabbed it right above him. Great play, great catch. We're down to 40 seconds, second and six. Little flat pass to Spirit Asanto. Breaks away from one Don and takes it up over the 30 yard line. He got away from Barrett Mitchell. It's going to be a first down out to the 33 yard line. A pickup of nine and a Charger first down. First catch for Spirit Asanto who has rushed for 22 yards on eight carries in this opening half. You look at the Don sideline right there. Chargers using their first time out. So that leaves them with two. Doug King, six years, an assistant coach for the Olive and Gold. 
Dons last year were five and five, two and two in the Channel League and missed out on CIF. DP won only three games last year, Jeff, but they were three league games. And so they finished second to Ventura and went to the CIF playoffs. Tonight, though, the winner gets the title, the number one seed, and the city championship. A lot at stake tonight. You know, we talked about it earlier. Santa Barbara would love to win this game and get a tie. DP wants to win outright. Crosstown showdown from DP brought to you by Keller Facial Plastic Surgery. Facial plastic surgery and advanced hair restoration specialists. 29 seconds to go before the break. Dan Ensel, Luxury Real Estate, also a great sponsor. A full-time agent selling homes locally for over 23 years. Give them a call today. All calls are confidential. First and 10 from the 32. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Quick pump fake. Bell going down the near sideline and it's caught at the 32 yard line. Robert Golvin, the senior wideout, used his 6 4 frame to corral that one. And that's a big play for DP, as we talked about earlier. Bornin with a huge leg on him. They're already in the field goal range for him, which is a big momentum shift here. That's a great point, Jeff. That ball went from the 33 to the 33. A 34 yard pickup. And we'll take a timeout as the Chargers burn their second of the half. 22 seconds remaining before halftime. We'll be back. This is award winning Fox 8. Hi, I'm Sarah Clark with Cox Communications. Welcome to Community Connection. This show highlights local organizations and leaders that contribute to our healthy, vibrant community. remaining 22 seconds and Jeff as you made a great point before the break Chargers potentially in field goal range with Bornan having a 50 yard leg so does Medina on the Don side first and 10 from the Santa Barbara 33 Bell needs to do something with it as time is certainly a factor and it continues to run down to 11 seconds so he used half the clock on that play. Well, you gotta make a move, do something, throw the ball or commit to the run. You can't dance around as Bell burns 11 of the 22 seconds. And it looked like once again, Bell slipped when he was trying to get away there. Big play for Santa Barbara. He ends up losing three yards on the play to boot. Or if you throw it out of bounds, you might save another four or five seconds and don't lose any yardage. But uh, perhaps the only miscue of the half for LaShawn Bell, who's played outstanding, has 148 yards through the air in this opening half. Has a beautiful touchdown pass to Nico Bornand from 37 yards out. As you look at the Dons fans, both sides have had a lot to cheer about tonight. And right now with a 14-14 game, it is shaping up, as we said, already a classic, but boy, what a second half we are in store for here tonight. And remember, there are overtimes yes. in league play in high school, so if we're deadlocked after four quarters, we'll play on. That's big. 11 seconds before the half. Chargers out of timeouts, second and 13, trips to the near side. Bell launches it and throws it behind Bornan as the ball skips at the 20 yard line, incomplete. That is only the second incomplete pass of the half, Jeff. Bell's first was incomplete, then he reeled off seven straight completions before that errant throw. And Santa Barbara now will game plan here. 
They want to use their second timeout on this third and 13 play with six seconds to go. They don't want to give up a score here, do they? No, they definitely don't. They've got momentum going their way, so they definitely don't want to give up a score with six seconds left in the half. So 14 all is the score, third and 13 upcoming. Both teams taking care of business last week. Chargers led 17-0 at home against Buena after three quarters before hanging on to win 24-19. Don's led 25-10 after three quarters at home against Ventura and won at 25-17. Just a reminder, you can watch rebroadcasts of the Crosstown Showdown, Santa Barbara and Dos Pueblos, November 3rd through the 18th. Two weeks of the Crosstown Showdown, Saturdays and Sundays at 2 p.m. and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 p.m right here on award-winning Cox 8. Hope you all had a great Halloween, and we're giving you some more treats for your football bag here tonight as Bell launches it. It could be the final play of the half is batted down by the Dons at the three-yard line, and the Santa Barbara faithful get up and roar their approval as the road Dons three and one away from Peabody Stadium this year. Dos Pueblos is three and one at home this year. And both teams with the league title on the line will head to their respective locker rooms in a 14-14 deadlock here in the 42nd Crosstown Showdown. Terrific first half, exciting plays on both sides, four touchdowns in the first half, and we are deadlocked at 14 apiece. This is award-winning high school football, the Crosstown Showdown for the Channel League title right here on award-winning Fox 8. Hi, I'm Sarah Clark with Cox Communications. Welcome to Community Connections. This show highlights local organizations and leaders that contribute to our healthy, vibrant community. Dons coming across town to face the Dos Pueblos Chargers, a battle of seven and two teams, and right now a stalemate, 14 apiece, as we get ready for the second half of action, Jeff, and tremendous first half, Santa Barbara, the only two turnovers in the first half, and Dos Pueblos with an edge in yards, 240 to 191, Dons, I think, have to feel a bit fortunate to be tied here at the half. Most definitely, we were talking about it at halftime, Dons with two turnovers to go in at halftime with a tie game is huge for them. We were wondering about how they were going to come out in the first half. They came out on fire. They scored quickly and often. Uh, their, their young quarterback, who's first time getting to start at the varsity level, did a tremendous job in the first half. Nice pinpoint passes, able to avoid the tackle in the backfield. Just a really outstanding job on that side of the ball. Chargers are 7-0 this year when leading or tied at the half. Their only two losses, they were behind. Santa Barbara is 7-0 when leading at the half. They're 0-2 tied or behind. So each team has been tied once at the half. Don's lost their game by four. It was against the Tascadero in week three. And Dos Pueblos, the only time they were tied was in week two at San Luis Obispo. They ended up winning that game 21-20. 92 rushing yards for those Pueblos in the first half, 57 for Santa Barbara. Both quarterbacks did well. They were both 7 of 10. Chargers 148 passing yards, Santa Barbara 134. And we're ready for the second half. The Dons who deferred, if you remember. So they will get the second half kickoff, but born and make sure the Dons won't do anything with it as he whistles the kick through the end zone for the third time tonight. And the Dons will start the second half at their 20-yard line. Both quarterbacks played excellent football in the opening 
24 minutes. Eli Hale, you wouldn't know, he was a substitute quarterback tonight. He did not miss a beat. And LaShawn Bell, a multi-threat with a great first half as well. Channel League title, number one seed in the Channel League for the playoffs. And the city championship is on the line. Not to mention the fact that Dos Pueblos has won the last three in this series. And if DP wins here in the second half, Jeff, it will be their third consecutive city championship. They would have had four except San Marcos in 09 upset DP to win the city championship. So we'll see what happens. Santa Barbara starts with a penalty, an inauspicious way to start the third quarter, their fifth flag of the night. So they'll start now from the 15, and Jimenez trying to turn the corner, cannot, and is dropped for a loss. Nico Bornan, who does everything for DP, brings Jimenez down for a loss of two. Bornan doing a great job of tackling him from behind, just running him down in the backfield for a loss. As we talked about earlier, Bornan, just a tremendous athlete. Both sides of the ball, kicking, punting, you name it, he can do it. Both marquee runners, Jeff, in the first half had 22 yards. Jimenez, six carries for his 22. Spirito Santo, eight carries for his 22. Dylan Rohde was the leading rusher, three carries for 58 yards in the first half as Spirito Santo runs head into Rudy Corrales up near the 15-yard line. Corrales takes it up for a couple extra yards after the pop to the 18. That will be a pickup of five yards and will bring up third down and about 12. First catch of the Crosstown Showdown for Corrales. Nice pass here on third and 12. Hale delivers a bullet to the sure-handed Emilio Gonzalez, who takes it out over the 30-yard line. It will be a first down Santa Barbara on a pickup of 16 yards. And Gonzalez starting to pick up some steam now, some key catches in the first half, and here we start the second half with a nice reception. As we said earlier, a huge game last year against Dos Pueblos. Look for that possibly to do the same here in the second half. And Hale, who started the opening half three of three, opens the second half two of two. As the Dons on first and 10 from the 33. As you look at the Chargers sideline, staying with the Brown game, Polo Torres. As you see him checking out of the Santa Barbara lineup, we mentioned the three-pronged attack, Torres, Jimenez, and Corrales. Combined now have touched the ball from scrimmage 13 times in the running game. Torres picking up two yards there on his fifth carry of the night, second and eight. Opening minutes, third quarter. Channel League title at stake. Hale hit at the 40-yard line and keeps his legs churning as he pushes the pile out near the 45. Strong running there by the junior, James Hale. You said it, John, strong run. At one point, it looked like he had a defender on his shoulders and he's just carrying him for the extra yardage. Nice push at the end there by the young quarterback. So a pickup of nine yards is a first down. DP with the statistical advantage and the Dons had the only two turnovers, but you get the feeling that the longer they stay, in this game, it's gonna help Santa Barbara. Dons go to a new quarterback, Obed Soto, as Hale needs a breather. Helmet came off. So there's an interpretation of the new rule. Carl Gibbons right on that one as Obed Soto had to check in, Jeff, when Hale lost his helmet. New rules enforced, of course, for safety now, the utmost factor in football. NFL, of course, has spearheaded all of that. Second and five. And a flag with Hale back in. I think that's a great rule. 
it sometimes is unfortunate when it happens at a critical time in the fourth quarter, let's say, but they're so conscious now of concussions and the repercussions of those injuries. And as I said, it's really started from the top at the NFL and it's worked all the way down to the youth leagues. Right, and a, and a great rule. You know, you want to protect these young athletes. You don't want them to pay the price later on in life for, you know, a silly play out there. So a great rule. Couldn't be happier with that one when it came out. Five yards marked off against Santa Barbara. Gonzalez now as he gives a low five to Polo Torres. They switch positions. Cheetah pattern, here comes the blitz. And a little dump off by Hale. If it's caught, it will be a loss of a yard, but I think they're gonna rule him down. That's actually a good thing for Santa Barbara. They would have lost a yard, maybe two. But then instead, they rule incomplete pass. Hale doing a nice job of backpedaling and get rid of that ball. He had a defender just bearing down on him, able to get rid of the ball at the last moment. Unfortunately, it's incomplete for Santa Barbara. But it worked out well. They avoid a two-yard loss. That's a ball you don't want to catch. Brings up third and ten with just over eight minutes to go. Third quarter, 42nd annual Crosstown Showdown from Scott O'Leary Stadium. Hale with nowhere to throw, runs toward his bench, but was driven out of bounds. Tremendous pursuit by Liam Stinson, the 6'2 junior defensive end, made sure Hale was gonna be well short of the first down marker. He needed the Dos Pueblos 46 yard line and is short by six yards. Jordan de Graffenreed back for the Chargers, along with Daniel Giordani, as the punt by Alberto Hernandez will come to rest just inside the DP 20 yard line. There is a marker on the play in the middle of the kick. Ball comes to rest at about the 17 yard line. So a 35 yard punt by Alberto Hernandez, but again, the marker is going to be on the Chargers. Tonight's Crosstown Showdown brought to you by Presto Pasta. Visit us at our new location on De La Vina in the Ralph Shopping Center, Presto Pasta. John Martini, Jeff Zamora. It doesn't get any better than this for high school football. The first Friday night of November, the crispness in the air and the Channel League title is within grasp for either one of these teams. Who will want it more? 7.49 to go. 14-14 is our score. The Chargers backed up now. We'll start from their nine. And LaShawn Bell, 148 yards through the air and 12 yards on the ground in the first half. 160 all-purpose yards. Little handoff, Charger sideline, Nate Mendoza there with his arms folded, contemplating every move, a chess match tonight between these two fine young coaches. It's going to be interesting to see what adjustments were made at halftime for Dos Pueblos' offense as we come out with the first play as a run, see if they try to air it out a little bit. Spirit Asanto picking up three, that Charger penalty was half the distance. So it was an eight yard mark off and now more flags at the 7-10 mark. Chargers and Dons each with six penalties, Jeff, in this game. You said that penalties would be a factor. Right now it's a push. Chargers six flags for 48 yards. Dons six flags for 45 yards. And here's the call on this one. Offside, Santa Barbara. You know it was the best thing, Jeff, when I was Looking at the, uh, the numbers this week for the game coming in, both teams, I felt proud for the fact that they took care of business in their games last week. Both of them knocking off Ventura and Buena respectively to keep this head-on collision for the title in place. And what a game we're enjoying tonight. Hope you're enjoying it as well in your living rooms on award-winning Cox 8. Anthony Spirit Asanto. Athlete of the Week this year for his tremendous performance. Carl Gibbons, our floor director. To my left, Jeff Zamora. 
our analyst, Dare Holdren, working the game tonight on radio to Carl's left, fine linebacker for San Marcos. I asked Dare tonight, I said, being a Royal calling a Charger Dons game, does that mean you're going to hate both teams equally? And he says, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true linebacker, Dare is one of the best. That was our first year calling high school football, Jeff, 1992, and Dare's Royals went all the way to the CIF playoffs. They lost on a controversial lateral pass that uh, San Marcos scored a tying touchdown in the last minute, and the referees waved it off and said that the receiver had his knee down when he caught the ball. And to this day, we did the broadcast down in uh, Hawthorne, and kid's knee was about two inches off the ground. It was a horrible call, wow. and it cost the Royals their season. Would have sent the game into overtime. It's a shame. Second and nine with 5.48 to play. Ball comes loose. It spits out, but then spits back towards the DP huddle. Santa Barbara certainly thinks they have it, but no indication yet. And I think DP came up with it. When Bell handed off, the ball spit forward, but then I did see it get kicked back. And Dos Pueblos, much to the chagrin of the Dons fans, on the near side, the Chargers will retain possession. The ball went in the pile, but then I saw it spit back. So I think it was inadvertently pushed or kicked back by a Don's defender. And lucky for the Chargers, they get the possession back. It is a loss of two. Brings up third and 11. And Bell is going down. Sacked. Santa Barbara's Barrett Mitchell gets him with five minutes to play. Stuck out his arm and knocked him down with one hand. First sack of the night for both teams. Bell rolling out to his left, looked to throw back across his body, but Barrett Mitchell just bearing down on him and sacking him in the backfield. Fourth down, Dos Pueblos, and Borden out to kick another punt. Loss of eight on the play. Fourth and 19. So the Chargers will send out Bornan. He hits one that sticks like a nice wedge. And the Charger 48 rolls to the 49 and dies right there. So the Dons with a big sack. Barrett Mitchell with a big play on defense and Santa Barbara with 4.24 to play in the third quarter. As you see the Dons fans getting a little bit restless and excited over that. They'll have a half a field. Excellent field position and a 14-14 tie. 36 yard punt by Bornand on his fourth punt of the night. Hale, that quarterback will hand off. And right in front of the Don's bench, they hand to Rudy Corrales, who gets some nice blocks and takes it down to the Charger 43, maybe the 42. They'll spot it just short of the 42. We'll call it a gain of seven on Corrales' second carry of the game. 350 clock is running. Anticipation starting to build. You can just feel the intensity level coming up now as the game wears on in the second half. Quick little run to the near side. Charger defense so quick. They're so athletic. I think the Buena coach was the guy that said they have 11 guys running to the ball on every play. It definitely showed on that play, as you saw him just swarming to the ball. Don's cheerleaders have had a lot to cheer about tonight. Their team, without their star quarterback, have come to play in an emotional game, and they have played so well tonight. Well, the fan bases of both of these teams should be very proud of these kids tonight. It's a championship game, a lot of pressure. And boy, have both teams been as good as advertised so far in this game. That's for sure. Both teams came out ready to play. 
head in head on. You know, we, we talked about it earlier. They both had games last week they could have easily overlooked in anticipation of this, but they didn't. They handled business, and tonight's game makes it that much more exciting. Third down and short. Tonight's Crosstown Showdown from Scott O'Leary Stadium is brought to you by our title sponsor, Montecito Bank and Trust, delivering flexible financial solutions. Also brought to you tonight by Milpas Rental, equipment rental and sales, serving our community for 60 years. Milpas Rental, equipment rental and sales. They bring the chains out, Montecito Bank and Trust, our title sponsor, helping individuals and families along their paths to prosperity. Chains come out and they are gonna say fourth down and less than a yard. And you better believe Santa Barbara is gonna go for this one. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Ball is at the Dos Pueblos 39. Power backfield. For the Dons, Hale on the snap, I believe the center and quarterback had an issue there and it's a false start. I think Hale started his motion forward before he had the football. I think you got it, John. It looked like he started leaning forward in anticipation of that hike and the hike just wasn't there and they got called for procedure. They tried a quick count, Hale was ready, but the center snap just not in sync. And now the Dons, will have to kick it away, it would appear, as the ball is moved back five yards to the Charger 44. The Graffin Reed, the single return man, standing at his 15. Now they bring out another one, awaiting the punt of Alberto Hernandez. Good snap. Hernandez hits a wobbly spiral that hits at the 19-yard line, takes a very good Santa Barbara roll, and the Dons will touch it down right near the five-yard line. Beautifully done by Alberto Hernandez. 38-yard punt with the roll, and for the second time, Hernandez pins the Chargers deep here in the second half. That's a huge punt with field position so critical. Two possessions for DP in the second half, and both times they feel their backs against the goal line. Not a place you want to be to start the half. We'll see if they can move the ball a little bit. 14 to 14 is our score. 2.48 to go in the third quarter. City championship, number one seed in the Channel League on the line. Do the Chargers get an outright Channel League title? Or do the Dons earn a co-championship? That is what is at stake here in this one tonight. It's the regular season finale. Dos Pueblos is guaranteed a playoff spot. Santa Barbara, though, not as uh, concrete. If they were to lose this game, Ventura beating San Marcos would forge a three-way tie. It would be a vote of the principals and athletic directors who gets that automatic second bid? It would come down to the Dons, Ventura, and Buena. Second and six after the run by Spirito Santo of four yards. And DP right now finding the yards hard to come by. That was David Blevins, the fullback, getting his first carry of the night. Pushes it out to the 15-yard line. So Blevins with five hard-earned yards there. David coming in, eight carries for 35 yards on the season. He has one touchdown rushing. Big play here, third and one. Chargers trying to move the chains. Don's trying to hold for field position, and it's going to be very close. Dos Pueblos needed a yard. This one's going to come down. I would assume to another measurement. And I think they're gonna mark him short. The ball is just over the 15. From here, Jeff, it would appear to be about two thirds of a yard short. So they will bring the markers out, the chain gang, as they should on this critical third and short call here. To me, it looks short and that's the call. I guess we don't need to find an optometrist just yet as a sponsor. 
Good eyes, John. Good eyes. Hey, even a blind squirrel gets an acorn now and then. Now we're having some fun. Hope you are as well. Halloween just passed. Getting ready for Thanksgiving and the Christmas holiday season. Hope all of you had a very safe and happy Halloween. Lots of candy. Lots of candy. I know my twins came home with a killing of candy. <laughs> Daddy was in heaven. Daddy was in heaven. <laughs> you had to inspect it all, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Sanchez trying to treat the Dons fans here with some more spins, similar to his touchdown in the big game. When he put a spin move at the five to complete a 30-yard touchdown against San Marcos. Sanchez here taking the ball at midfield and spins his way to the DP 37. Now you said it, John. It looked like he had three different spin moves on that one run. Tremendous effort by Sanchez. Another solid punt return. It's the 65-yard punt return. Led to the first score of the game tonight. And now Sanchez takes one 13 yards to again give the Dons tremendous field position. Just 52 seconds left to play in the third quarter. It's been a scoreless third quarter. Hale slips on the snap and the Chargers, Ryan Nuno celebrates as Hale is dumped for a loss of three yards back to the DP 40. And Hale feeling the pressure off the right side of the line there, just came in untouched on the defensive side, and Hale slipped down and got pulled for a loss. Well, both teams get so much accolades for their offensive firepower, and rightly so, but both defenses are very athletic. I'm impressed with both squads tonight. Marker comes out at the start of the play. Hale to the sideline, fires it up for grabs, and it is knocked down at the five-yard line by Jacob Androck, the 5'8 senior corner for the Chargers. Androck doing a great job defensively. Typically, you might see somebody try to intercept that and come up short. He went up with the mindset of, I'm batting this thing down and out of bounds so nobody else is getting it. Great defensive play. And he was working against the leading receiver in the Channel League, James Stevens, in single coverage. Another athletic, acrobatic play by these two teams tonight. What a treat seeing these athletes out here. Tremendous effort on both sides of the ball for both teams. Five seconds left, third quarter. Third and 13. Hale trying to get it himself but he is tripped up by the omnipresent Bornan at the 35-yard line, and James will bring the third quarter to a close as he is tripped up at about the 33. Looks like and there's a Don on the field. I think it's James Hale. Looks like he's cramping up a little bit. So Hale on the field. We'll have to find out about his whereabouts as we head to the fourth quarter. Three in the books here at Dos Pueblos. The Channel League Championship will come down to the fourth quarter. We'll find out who takes the crown when we come back. This is award-winning high school football, the Crosstown Showdown for the Channel League title right here on award-winning Cox A. show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. Seven yards picked up by Eli Hale, but it looked like he cramped up. He did get off on the sidelines under his own power. You see him there. Santa Barbara is going to continue to play field position. They'll punt it 
on fourth and six from the Charger 33-yard line, and Hernandez trying to angle it close to the goal line. I believe the Don on the line was in the end zone, however. Jimenez with a great try, pleading his case with the official, but even though he kept the ball in bounds, his feet were in the end zone, and it's ruled a touchback. So the Chargers will have it at their 20-yard line. A couple of Dons are cramping up here in the last few plays. We just saw Santa Barbara's Jordan Guzman come running over to the sideline. Hale appeared to have cramped up on the play at the end of the third quarter. Not something very uncommon with uh, you guys got playing on both sides of the ball. They tend to cramp up, especially fourth quarter. Got to get a lot of water in them, try and get them rehydrated. Sure, we'll see him back out on the field in a, a game as crucial as this. So a 33-yard punt by Hernandez, but a net of 13, and Bell is going down. For the first time tonight, Jordan Pena gets the sack. Back at the 12-yard line, that will go as a loss of eight yards. Jordan Pena, who has three fumble recoveries this year and an interception, fourth in the Channel League in tackles, the senior inside linebacker with a big play right there. They're going to say officially a loss of seven. And the Dogs defense rising to the challenge and their crowd responding with their effort. Mitchell Barrett made the stop. No gain on the play. Well, both teams just coming to play tonight. This is war. Santa Barbara's defense really stepping up in the second half, not allowing DP's offense to do much. they the backs to the goal line every time they get the ball. Don's fans have been stopping their feet all night. The air horns are out. Spirit of Santo trying to get outside, and he can't. Stopped at the 15-yard line. He'll pick up two, but he's well short of the first down. And Santa Barbara, the defense holds yet again. Tremendous job by the Don's defense. Well, they have certainly won the battle of field position in this second half. The Chargers have felt like they've been pinned deep the entire third quarter in the first two minutes now of the fourth quarter. As the officials stop play momentarily, Don's fans trying to catch their breath for a quick moment. Boy, both teams are going to have to pull out the sucrets tonight. The fans have been screaming from the opening whistle. DP has to be wondering if they're going to get decent field position at all in this second half. Just backs to the goal line. Santa Barbara's defense doing a great job of just keeping them deep in the trench. Both sides imploring their team to will this one out as Bornan with another kick near midfield. A Don touched it and then falls on it. Stevens falls on it at the 47-yard line. Will be a 39 yard punt by Nico Bornan. Both punters have done a nice job tonight as well. And once again, in a tie ball game, Santa Barbara will start with excellent field position. Well, now it comes down to, as always, execution, but who has the heart and will and who has more fumes in the gas tank? It's a battle of wills right now. Crowd on their feet with 9.41 to play. Don's back on the attack. Hale, who took care of the cramps, is back on the field as they run straight up the gut. That will be a short run. Look to be Polo Torres on the run as he stamps it out for a yard to the 48. Leading rusher tonight for Santa Barbara is Hale with 32 yards. Spirito Santo has 32 as well. Rody, who only touched it three times in the first half, 
is the leading ground gainer tonight with 58 yards. And Santa Barbara looking at a second and nine. Did not like the Charger alignment. And they'll use their first timeout of the second half. We'll take a timeout as well with head coach Doug Keynes. 9.01 to play, fourth quarter. The league title up for grabs. Tied at 14 apiece. You're enjoying high school football on award-winning Fox 8. show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. Second down and nine, Don's using their first time out of the second half. Hale, rolls right, fires to Stevens, who slips a tackle at the 40. Pulls over a charger at the 30 down inside the 30-yard line. He got over Tyler Welch for first down yardage. That'll go down to the 28-yard line, a gain of 24 yards for the Dons. And another athletic play by Hale, able to avoid the guys in the backfield, finds James Stevens down on the sideline, able to catch the ball and break off a nice little run after avoiding a couple tackles. Stevens, three catches in the ball game, 55 yards from the 28. Hale going for the lead, and he has it. Emilio Gonzalez again goes down with a spectacular catch. Emilio Gonzalez with a second touchdown catch of the second half. And the Don's fans erupt as Santa Barbara has the lead with 8.28 to play in the fourth quarter. Looks like Gonzalez down on the field, another one suffering from cramps as they're trying to stretch his leg out. Second 28-yard touchdown pass tonight from Hale to Emilio Gonzalez. That was the length of the tying touchdown just before halftime. And now Santa Barbara, after a scoreless third period, takes the lead back with 8.28 to go. A 28-yard pass. Eli Hale's third pass touchdown of the night. He hit Jimenez from 15 yards out. And he's hit Emilio Gonzalez twice from 28 yards. And again, Jeff, it was a jump ball situation. And Gonzalez, the taller of the two athletes, came down with it. Medina with the all-important extra point. It's up and it is good. And Santa Barbara, three and one on the road this year. DP three and one at home. And right now, the Dons with the upper hand, leading by seven. Great competition tonight. We want to duck in the good deeds of both schools as we tell you about Milpas Rental, a great sponsor of high school football, serving our community for 60 years. It's Milpas Rental. Jeff, a great thing tonight. Rhonda McGahee. Well, we'll get to that in one second. Tonight's game also brought to you by Presto Pasta. Visit us at our new location on Delavina Street in the Ralph Shopping Center, Presto Pasta. Wanted to duck in Rhonda McGahee from Dos Pueblos and Mary Tenoso from Santa Barbara, Jeff. They've got both cheerleading squads together tonight. They're going through the stands, getting donations for Hurricane Sandy survivors for the uh, wreckage and destruction. Donations being made to the Red Cross. They're gonna send the money 
off to the Red Cross. And Rhonda told me before the game, as you see the kickoff return by DP, still on his feet. Malcolm Sillard Farrell ignites the Charger crowd. Rhonda told me everything's on the line, Chargers and Don's rivalry, and she said we wanted to show that both schools could get together for a community effort to help those people on the eastern seaboard that are in need. And I thought it was a wonderful gesture by both schools and to both ladies as well for organizing it and of course for both cheerleading squads to uh, go through the stands tonight and get donations from the fans. That's awesome of that, them to do that. You know, big game here, but they see the big picture and what's more important, helping others. And that's a great thing for both schools to step up and do that. So Dos Pueblos, after leading 14 to seven, now sees their fate down by a touchdown. Still 8.09 to play. Matt Sessler, Made the catch at the 44-yard line. DP with a little breathing room now, starting to open up the offense a little bit for the first time in the second half. Their backs run up to the goal line. First catch of the night for Sessler. That's the Chargers' first pass, Jeff, of the second half. They've had to run because they've been backed up. Bell completes the pass for a gain of 12. And now on first down, Rudy Corrales makes the stop on Tyler Welch, the ball carrier. Tyler picks up two yards. He's a 5'10 junior, 155 pounds. 721, clock is running as you see a quick shot of LaShawn Bell, a junior. He's gone all the way at quarterback. Now rolling to his right. Fires a pass. Just low and incomplete at the 30-yard line. Was looking for Nico Bornan. It will bring up third and eight for Dos Pueblos. Santa Barbara, you can't say enough about their effort tonight. Losing Sean Ramos. James Eli Hale stepping in, not missing a beat. This Don's defense ferocious tonight. It's been a wonderful game to this point, and we've still got over seven minutes at least to play in this one. Critical third and eight here from the 43. Bell rolls, fires down the far sideline. No flag, some contact. They're saying incidental. Efren Sanchez was in coverage. Iwanaga was there as well for the Dons. The pass was intended for Malcolm Salard Farrell. Brings up fourth and eight for DP. Beautiful defense by the Santa Barbara secondary on that one. Tell out of the shotgun. And before he can get the snap, Marker comes out. And I believe Dos Pueblos called timeout. So no penalty on the play. Chargers got a timeout called. They're first. That will leave both teams with two. So let's take a time out. This is high school football on Cox 8. Hi, I'm Sarah Clark with Cox Communications. Welcome to Community Connections. This show highlights local organizations and leaders that contribute to our healthy, vibrant community. to go 
You'll certainly want to watch a rebroadcast of this one, November 3rd through the 18th. Weekends at 2 p.m., Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 p.m. Chargers going for it from the Dons 43. Dons fans are on their feet. Bell out of the shotgun. Fourth and eight. Fires incomplete. Charger going for the ball initiates contact. But no flag. Matt Sessler was the intended receiver. And the Dons will take over on downs with 6.57 to play. Jonah Iwanaga was in coverage. Big play for the Santa Barbara defense right there, able to hold them on fourth down and get the turnover on downs. Great field position for them now on their own 42 with 6.57 left in the fourth quarter. They're in the driver's seat right now. The Don's defense stepping up. LaShawn Bell, three straight incompletions. Santa Barbara 21, Dos Pueblos 14. Sanchez in motion on first and 10 from the Santa Barbara 43. And going backwards on that one, stuck for a loss of three yards is Rudy Corrales as he's drilled back at the 40. Brought down by number 45, Luke Anderson. Got a great push up the middle, able to corral him in the backfield for a loss. Well, that's going to make Luke's mom, Laura, mom, Laura, and daughter, Caitlin, awfully happy. They stopped by the booth before the game. Luke, a 5'8", 205-pound senior defensive tackle. But a big play there, loss of three. Brings up second and 13. Pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage, but it flutters to Gonzalez, who cradles it like a newborn baby at the 47. Another tough catch. Great hand-eye coordination to watch that all the way in by Gonzalez. Great hand-eye coordination, great concentration, period. Ball gets tipped like that, you never know where it's gonna go, but he did a great job of seeing it into his hands and hauling in the catch. Eli Hale, who had thrown only two passes all year, has thrown for 211 yards and three touchdowns tonight. Gonzalez, his fifth catch on that last one for 86 yards. And a huge third and five upcoming. Whistle stops play. Was there another timeout? Nope, penalty, delay of game against the Dons. That's a killer for Santa Barbara. Turns it into a third and 10. That's a huge mistake right there. Five thirty-two to go. Both teams, as I have mentioned, with two timeouts. This one is far from over. Chargers hoping for a stop here to get the ball back. Dons trying to move the chains and salt away some more clock. Third and 10. Hale fires for Gonzalez. And the 6'3 receiver has done it again as he hauls it in at the 27-yard line. And the Dons faithful going crazy on the near side. 31 yards on third and 10. And Hale doing an outstanding job of spotting the mismatch out on the, on the sideline there. Gonzalez just with that height and that athletic ability, all you have to do is throw it up and he's going up and getting it. Perhaps the legend of Eli Hale is starting to be introduced. He will be loved forever by the Olive and Gold if they win this one. Pressed into duty for Sean Ramos. Now Hale on first and 10, going down the sideline and will be knocked out of bounds. Short of a first down, but not by much. All depends on the spot. And a solid run for Eli Hale, as you see him there. He's been cramping up, he's been hobbling in the second half, but what a yeoman performance tonight by the junior signal caller. As I said, he was one of two throwing the ball this year. Well, he's not one for two anymore. They are gonna say first down. So Jimenez will get the call. 
They gave Hale the first down on a gain of 10 exactly. So he got a good spot. And now Jimenez with the Dons leading by seven. Get a few more yards. But there is a flag on the play at the 15 yard line and that run is coming back. We'll get the indication here. It's a holding Jeff against Santa Barbara. Still plenty of time, 5-12 on the clock. But if the Don should score here, they could really put the hurt on DP. First and 20, Polo Torres on a little misdirection draw, goes straight up the middle and takes it down to the 18-yard line, a gain of seven on the play. We'll bring up second and 13. Santa Barbara with 10 penalties in the ball game and two turnovers, yet they lead by seven. And looking for more, perhaps. Torres, once again, fighting for yards in the red zone. You see Polo getting up there, one of the three seniors in the Don's backfield. As the clock continues to move, Gain of six for Torres. And another critical third down here. Third down will call it seven. Ball is at the DP 14 yard line. The fans are on their feet. Hale under center. Gonzalez though got up off his crouch and took a step forward. This will cost Santa Barbara five more yards. Something Santa Barbara didn't need on that play. Dos Pueblos really needs a big stop here. Third down, clock ticking. Back to their goal line. They really need to step up on this one. Well, the last time they had third and 10, they went bombs away for 31 yards to Emilio Gonzalez. The senior wideout gives five of it back right there. And Doug Keynes will use his second timeout. We'll take a timeout with him. 3.54 to go, fourth quarter. This is award-winning high school football on Cox 8. show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. Third and 12 coming up following the Don's 11th penalty of the game. They lead at 21-14. Ball at the 19-yard line. Hale hands to Rudy Corrales, who will take it down close to the 10. Looks like he'll be marked down at the 12 or 13 yard line. So a gain of seven on the play. But Santa Barbara is short of the first down. And that means they'll try to make it a two score game here by bringing out Matthew Medina, who is six of nine in field goals this year. This one will be a 29 yard field goal. Ball is spotted, the kick is off, and it is gone. <laughs> Plenty of leg by the senior Medina as he gives the Dons three huge points. The field goal makes it 24 to 14 in favor of the Dons. And Santa Barbara finishing off that drive with a little conservative offense, playing it smart, taking the sure three points and making it a two-score game with three minutes left in the game, really putting the pressure on DP's offense to try and move the ball now. Seventh field goal for Medina this year. 
none of them as important as that one right there. It makes it a two-score game. Doug Keynes used two of his timeouts, but he used them wisely. As you said, Jeff, emphasis on conservative calls, hold on to the ball, and let your senior kicker do the rest. Possessions as important as points at this stage as the kickoff will sail into the end zone. Alberto Hernandez with a boot there, and the Chargers will have to start at the 20 yard line. So DP, the home team, with two timeouts, still 3 13 to play. But as you said, the pressure now is squarely on the Charger offense. Congratulations to Brock Hoffman, Lou Fontana, and Mike Johansson, our award-winning crew, winning an Emmy recently for their produce, product, production of Backbeat. Michael Warner won two Emmys for his production of Alaska Dreams. So congratulations to our talented crew, Brock, Lou, Mike, and Michael Warner. Pass is incomplete. As Bell fires, stops the clock with 3.06. That's on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Jeff. Backbeat at 8.30 on Cox 8. Wonderful show. I've seen about three or four episodes. They talk anywhere from local kids and what they're doing in the music industry all the way to the professionals. It's a wonderful show. It is. Really good show. Great talent that we work with. Brock Hoffman, often seen around town. He's really into fitness. It's also, you can watch it on VOD on Cox Channel 8. Bell fires over the middle. It's caught by Sessler, the junior, as he hauls it in for a DP first down up at the 38-yard line, a quick 18 yards. Clock, of course, will stop while they move the chains. That's what the Chargers need to do. Pick up yardage in chunks of 10 or more so the clock stops. And if they score, they'll have a chance for an onside kick. From the 38-yard line, Bornan makes the catch, but is upended. Clock continues to run, a three-yard gain. Jonah Iwanaga on the tackle. But that one only a gain of three on Bornan's second catch. Now Bell again fires near side for Sessler. He makes the catch again in Don's territory. We'll see where they mark him down. It will be at the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 21. And another Charger first down. And Bell really starting to air the ball out. Nice throwing passes there. Really caught, spot his receiver on the far side of the field. Great pass. Chargers with a sense of urgency, Jeff. Pass again caught. And a vicious hit by Pena. Bornan unable to hold on. It does stop the clock. I thought he had it, but Pena rocked him for the incompletion. What a hit by Jordan Pena. Pena brought the lumber on that one. I thought he had that for sure. Bornan is hard as they come to try to dislodge the ball. LaShawn Bell over 200 yards now. Sessler, his third catch on the previous play. Second and 10, a little flat out to Malcolm Sillard Farrell with 2.03 to go. And Farrell, I believe, got out of bounds. The senior with a nice heady play there to stop the clock. They'll pick up five on the play. So it brings up third and five. First catch of the night for Malcolm Sillard Farrell. 5'8 receiver, 160 pounds. 24-14 Santa Barbara. Channel League Championship on the line. It's a co-championship for both teams if the Dons win. But they'll have the number one seed. Bell scrambling. Cuts it inside, stays in bounds, but he picks up the first down. That was more important. You have to sacrifice clock, and if you get the first down, the clock will stop. 
So a great decision there by the junior quarterback. Did a great job of freezing the secondary, too, with the pump fake. Made him think he was going to pass the ball. He got, got to able to pick up the extra yardage for the first down. Nice, heady play. Picked up eight on third and five. Now he spots the receiver. Boy, that was nearly a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Officials don't call it. Bornan got rocked up high. Makes the catch at the 15, maybe the 16. That'll be a gain of six. Third catch for Bornan, and Bell clocks it as he throws it to the turf with 126 to play. Charger fans on the far side, nervous, as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. They need a touchdown and an onside kick. Don's a 10-point lead has never felt so tenuous with the Chargers marching down the field. 15 yards away as DP's trying to make it again a one-score game. Third and four. Bell fires as receiver falls. No flag. He wasn't tripped. Falls down at the 10-yard line. And so it comes down to this play, fourth and four from the Santa Barbara 16-yard line. And Bell spotting Sessler on the quick out there. Sessler open, but unfortunately lost his footing and fell. Otherwise, it would have been a completion. Lucky break for Santa Barbara, and here we are, down to this final play. And those Pueblos, knowing they need two scores, going for a field goal here. It will be a 33-yard field goal. Nico Bornan trying to make it a one-score game. He slips as he kicks it, but it is up and it is gone. Great call by Nate Mendoza and the Charger coaching staff. Everyone anticipating a go for it on fourth down. Mendoza knowing he needed two scores. Opts for the field goal and keeps the onside kick opportunity alive. Brilliant job by the Chargers coaching staff. Great call by Coach Mendoza. Now I think we'll see Santa Barbara's good hands team out there up front try to get this onside kick in. But again, a great call. Knowing that they needed two scores, take the quick easy one, kick the onside, see if they can't recover it. Nico Bornan with a 33-yard field goal, his sixth of the year. He's six of 11. And no doubt, his most important field goal of the season. Chargers still have two timeouts. So they can stop the clock twice, but they would prefer to get this onside kick. Santa Barbara will put their hands people out front. Polo Torres is there. Emilio Gonzalez is there. Jordan Guzman on the front line. Here it is, onside kick. And I believe Emilio Gonzalez, big enough to block out the sun, it would appear, comes down with the football. So Santa Barbara will have it with 1.16 to play at their 45-yard line. Chargers can stop the clock twice. Four to 17 is the score. Santa Barbara, 76 seconds away from a co-championship and the number one seed. Chargers trying to claim the title outright. Dons will run, obviously. Polo Torres wrapped up for a loss, brought down by Bornand and Luke Anderson for a loss of three. And the Chargers will quickly use their second timeout. Let's take a quick timeout as well. DP down to one timeout. This is high school football on award winning Cox A.
a show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. One eleven to play, second and 13. Chargers can stop the clock one more time and will perhaps try to go for an all-out block should it come to a fourth down situation. Once again, Hale, who not only has thrown for 242 yards and three touchdowns, but is the Don's leading rusher in the ball game with 42 yards. And the Chargers will burn their final timeout. So they use just five seconds, Jeff, on that play. Chargers out of timeouts. The Crosstown Showdown for the league championship brought to you by our title sponsor, Montecito Bank and Trust, providing safe and sound financial solutions. And by Presto Pasta. Visit us at our new location on Delavina Street in the Ralph Shopping Center, Real Italian Presto. John Martini, Jeff Zamora. What a ball game. Santa Barbara High coming across town after losing their all league quarterback, Sean Ramos and Eli Hale, trying to burn a place in Don's lore tonight. He has not missed a beat has thrown for 242 yards and three touchdowns. And he's also the Don's leading ground gainer tonight with 42 yards. So much for big game jitters, huh? Yeah, you said it, John. Impressive debut at quarterback for Mr. Hale. And I'm sure Coach Kane is ecstatic about his prospect for next year. Third and 13, 106 to go. And Hale going backwards will be tossed down at the 30-yard line. So the Chargers fighting for every yard. Hale is slow to get up. Clock continuing to run. It will be fourth and long. That was a loss of 16 yards on the play. The clock continues to run as Hale limping off the field on that play. His team leading by seven. Clock continuing to run. We don't have a play clock, so we can't tell you how much is left, but the Dons are gonna have to use an injury timeout, it would appear, with 19 seconds to go. So Santa Barbara uses a timeout here. They want to talk it over on what will be fourth down and 26. So both teams, Jeff, are now out of timeouts. These guys in the straw hats, they've been yelling from the opening kick. And they have been getting the Dons fans lathered up and in a frenzy tonight. And right now their efforts have paid off. Santa Barbara leading 24-17. Fourth and 26, Jeff. Go for the block, go for the return, try to go for both. What do you do here? I think you gotta bring the heat on this and go for the block. Hernandez is a left-footed kicker. We'll see if the Chargers load up the right side of their defensive line. They have nine up. DeGraffin Reed is the sole returner. Good snap. Hernandez gets it away. DeGraffin Reed will field at his 34, and he slips at the 38 yard line. He had some room to run and just slipped. So a costly fall there. As we're down to 11 seconds to play, both teams are out of timeouts. And the Chargers are 61 yards away from a tie. Well, perhaps two plays, perhaps a hook and ladder. Let's see what they do here. Bell will operate out of the shotgun. Now rolling up to the 40. Has to get out of bounds. They are going to say he's still in bounds, and that's going to be the final play. LaShawn Bell unable to get out of bounds. 
Dons and the Santa Barbara High School Dons running around on the field with helmets high, jubilant, as they have forged a co-championship in the Channel League with a dramatic 24-17 victory over the Dos Pueblos Chargers. Santa Barbara will get the top seed in the Channel League and will have a home game next week. Dos Pueblos will still go to the playoffs as co-champions as well, but they will have the number two seed and we'll see on a coin flip if they are at home or on the road as well. The Dons win the city championship as well and break the three game losing streak to the Chargers to boot. Jeff, what a ball game. Impressive game. Mr. Hale came out, was on fire. Can't say much more. Great job, Santa Barbara Dons. They earned it tonight. So the Dons go to eight and two. Chargers fall to seven and three. Both teams three and one. Co-champions of the Channel League, but the Dons are celebrating as they win it 24 to 17. Stay with us. We'll have the player of the game on the field post-game when we return. What a ball game. 42nd Crosstown Showdown goes to the Dons, 24 to 17. This is award-winning high school football. You're enjoying it all on award-winning Cox 8. Hi, I'm Sarah Clark with Cox Communications. Welcome to Community Connections. This show highlights local organizations and leaders that contribute to our healthy, vibrant community. on the field post game as the Santa Barbara High School Dons earn a co-championship for the Channel League and most importantly they'll go to the playoffs as the number one seed in the Channel League and will have a guaranteed home game next week at Peabody Stadium as they come to Dos Pueblos and knock off the league unbeaten Chargers 24 to 17 and I'm here with the player of the game James Hale some people call him James some people call him Eli we're calling him a winner tonight player of the game as we bring in Javier Quesada, our good friend in Montecito Bank and Trust. Javier, great to see you. See you. Javier, the branch manager at the uh, Galita branch, Stork and Hollister. Javier, second time in two weeks, we've got a presentation to a Don for player of the game. Absolutely. Uh, t twice, in, uh, twice in three weeks, uh, um, you know, great game. Uh, I, I saw some, some great stuff. That I don't think they knew that you were going to have an arm, and uh, obviously you proved it to them. So on behalf of Montecito Bank and Trust and all of his associates, Congratulations on the game. Hey, well deserved. There you go, young man. James, congratulations. This is yours to keep. Big week, a lot of emotion surrounding the suspension of Ramos, and everybody was saying, well, Santa Barbara's going to have to go to the ground game. They did. You were the leading rusher in the game with 42 yards for the Dons, but you also had 242 yards passing and three touchdowns. You came into the game one for two passing this year. You're not one for two anymore, my friend. You're the player of the game. Tell me about how you summoned the energy, the courage to come out and really not miss a beat. I thought you played just as well as Sean Ramos tonight to lead your team to victory. Well, you know, we just practice. You know, we got to practice hard. You know, we practice hard. You know, our coaches said, don't let anything go, go against you. You know, we had to do what we had to do. No, we did this for Sean, you know? You know, that was, that was at a bad time, you know? We didn't, that was at a bad time. People didn't know that was gonna happen. Forget that dog, you know what I mean? Like, we had to do, <laughs> we really had to do, you know, we won, you know? Much props to our line, they yeah. kept us alive. Emilio, especially, nice grab, you know, just do what we had to do. Let's start from the beginning. I thought the tone of the game was set by the punt return by Efren Sanchez. 
took it at his 25 yard line, went 65 yards to the DP 10, and it set up the first score of the game, a 15 yard touchdown to Jason Jimenez, the first of your three touchdown passes. Tell me how important that 65 yard punt return was for getting the Dons motivated well, and into the game. That was very important. We needed that big time. I told him, I said, hey man, we're gonna need you. We need you to get down the field. And he did it. You know, he did it. He did it, you know, when we needed it. You had some great plays from a lot of guys. Two fabulous touchdown catches by Emilio Gonzalez. He just continues to amaze me. I know he's 6'3", but that jump ball play where he goes up and just wills the ball in, two outstanding touchdown grabs by number 11 oh, yeah. tonight. Talk about his performance. Oh, uh, Emilio, you know, he, you know he's, a, he's a hard headed kid. You know, we got to get on him, though, you know what I mean? Like, you know, he, <laughs> he catches the ball well. No good have to do, you know, he caught it well. You know? I told him, I said, hey, I'm gonna hit you tonight. You know, people didn't think I was gonna hit him. People thought I was gonna hit James, you know. They locked down on him, so I had to get Emilio. He's a big target, so we had to do it. Final question, you guys are co-channel league champions and you've got the top seed. You also win the city championship. It's the uh, 12th city championship in Santa Barbara history. One final question though, Dos Pueblos had their vaunted offense, 222 yards per game on the ground. You got to talk about the defense tonight. They shut down Spirito Santo. You shut down the whole rushing attack to less than 100 yards. Talk about your team's defensive performance. Oh, uh, and our defense, they grinded. I told them, I said, we're going to need you, you know, because offense is a little slow, you know, but we needed the defense. Rudy, shout out to Rudy, he did his thing. You know, everybody, you know, defense as well. We'll see you at Peabody Stadium next week. I know all these fans are going to join you as Santa Barbara High School wins tonight 24 to 17. They'll have a home game next week. And the player of the game, James Hale, 242 yards, three touchdowns, and 42 rushing as Santa Barbara wins it here at Dos Pueblos 24 17. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. If you didn't, something's wrong with you because this was a great game tonight. Dons reign supreme. They are the co champs of the Channel League. 24 17 is the final. We'll talk to you next time. Till then, John Martin. Saying good night from O'Leary Stadium. Oh, baby! Oh, baby!